So let's say that I asked 20 students, how many units are you taking? And uh, my responses are written there. Uh, I got values ranging from four units up to 18 units. And so if I wanna look at this data, uh, just looking at the data written down there, it's a little bit difficult on my eyes, right? There's just a bunch of numbers there. And so we can organize it in different ways. And one way to organize the data is with what we call a uh, frequency distribution. With the frequency distribution, we're gonna have uh, two columns. So we're gonna have a column for units because that's what those numbers represent, uh, the number of units. And then we're gonna have a column for uh, frequency. Frequency meaning how often somebody said that particular uh, unit. So like how many students said that they're taking four units versus how many students said that they're taking uh, 12 units. Okay, so if I look at the different values uh, that students gave, um, they range from four to 18, um, but not every unit between four and 18 was given. So I just write the ones that were given. So we have four, uh, five, six, uh, no one said seven. Uh, actually, nobody said five. I don't see a five, so let's erase that. So we only need the units that people actually gave. So I see four, I see six, uh, no one said seven, uh, eight, see any 11s, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, and 18. Okay, so I write down all the different units, and then next I'm going to write the frequency. So for example, for 4, uh, I am going to uh, how many people said that they were taking four units? So that's one, two, um, that's it, two people. All right, so I put a two there. Okay, all right, so how about six? So for six, I see only one six. So I put a one there for the frequency. And then for eight, I'm gonna count the eights. That's one, two. So two people said eight. So I put a two here. And let's see, how about nine? One person said nine. So one goes here. about 10. I see one 10 only. All right. And, and let's see, 12 is next. So one, two, three, four, Five, six. I see six, twelve. So I'm going to put a six here. And then try to pick some different colors, but I don't like them. All right, uh, thirteen. Let me see. Any thirteens? I see one thirteen. And how about fourteen? One, two, three. Three fourteens. How many fifteens? One, two fifteens. And then uh, finally, I have an eighteen. One person said eighteen. Okay, so if we look at that, uh, that's called a frequency distribution. Now, the numbers under the frequency column, they should add up to twenty. So 2 plus 1 plus 2, that's 5, 6, uh, 7, plus 6 is 13, 14, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay.
Okay, so they add to 20, so that's good, right? Uh, and so that's called a frequency distribution. All right, and uh, we use frequency distributions to make uh, bar graphs. Uh, your book would refer to this as a histogram, um, but generally when you only have a single value points, not an interval or group, it's usually called a bar graph, but for what we're doing, bar graph, histogram, and we're gonna look at uh, how to make that later. But the other thing that uh, we can organize this, instead of just giving a number for frequency, is we can do what we call the relative frequency. Um, oops, so, wait a second. And for relative frequency, another line here. All right, so for relative frequency. So relative frequency, it's like relative to the whole data set. And we find that by dividing the frequency, right, by the total uh, number of data points. So there were 20 data points. So if I do uh, two divided by 20 or two over 20, right, then uh, two divided by 20 would be 0.1, which is 10%. Okay. One uh, divided by 20, okay, uh, is going to be 0 0.05 or 5%. Okay, two divided by 20, we already did, and that's 10%. 1 divided by 20, again, about 5%, 5%. Right, and now, let's see, how about 6 divided by 20? Okay, so 6 divided by 20 is going to give us 0.3, or 30%. 1 divided by 20, again, 5%. 3 divided by 20, 15%. 10%, 5%. All right, and so if I were to add all of these percents, what should they add up to? They should add up to 100. So that's something that you will want to check uh, to make sure that you have done things correctly. All right, and I added them, and I added up to 100%. That's good. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at making a... Uh, bar graph, which we would do with the frequency distribution, and then making a pie chart, which we would do with the uh, relative uh, frequency distribution. And we'll make our uh, histogram slash bar graph first. So I need a horizontal axis, and the units is going to go on the bottom. Here. And then I need a scale. I don't have to start from zero uh, because the smallest number of units was four. So I can actually start a four, five, even though no one said five units because it's an axis, I'm going to write the value six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, uh, 15. Okay. If you have a large gap between data values, you can use this little symbol, which is like a break, and then do 18, because no one said 16 or 17. So I'm doing that little symbol for um, a break, which shows that between 15 and 18, there were no other uh, values given. And then my vertical axis is going to be the frequency. And I can go by ones on the frequency. I don't have to. I could go two, four, six. I could do one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, as long as the scale goes by the same amount. But our frequency only ranges from one to six, so I'm going to go by ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. 
So then we're just doing a visual representation here of the data. And so we're going to draw a bar for each data value. We're going to draw a bar that goes as high as the frequency. So since two people said they were taking four units, then I'm going to center a bar around the number four, and it's going to go up to two. Okay. So something like that. All right, no one said five. Um, one person said six, so that bar is only gonna go up to six. Yeah. All right, and then, let's see, eight. Two people said eight, so that bar goes up to two. I'm trying to make my bars, like, you know, the same amount of width. I am doing this by hand, so it's not perfect. The bars should not touch uh, because this data is actually single valued. You're not going to have any units like 8.999 units or anything like that. So technically the bars shouldn't touch. For group data where you have a range, your bars will touch. Um, that's kind of boring data, right? Most people just said one or two. So one person said 10. Uh, no one said 11. 12, sorry, six people said 12, so now I finally have a bar that's going up there, and one person said 13, three people said 14, so that's going to go up to three, two people said 15, and then one person said 18, okay, so that's our histogram for single value data. And then also notice we did not use relative frequency for this. So to make the bar graph slash histogram, we just need frequency. Okay, so next we're gonna look at making a pie chart. And I wanted to use an example that would not be quite as um, messy as the previous example. So let's say that I asked the same 20 students uh, what their favorite ice cream flavor was. And I only gave them four choices, though. They had to like pick from these four, because I'm going to have a big ice cream party, but you only get to pick from these four flavors. And you can see the frequency, four people just picked chocolate ice cream, uh, six people picked mint and chip, eight people picked cookies and cream. Cookies and cream wins every time. Uh, and only two people picked Rocky Road. So to make a pie chart, uh, we have to have the relative frequency. So again, we're going to have to calculate, and uh, to do the relative frequency, we need to divide by the total for the frequency. The total for the frequency is 20. So for this one, I'm going to do a 4 divided by 20. Uh, right, so 4 divided by 20 is 0.2, okay, which would give us uh, 20%. Uh, this is 0.2 or 20 percent okay. and then for this one I need 6 divided by 20 which is 0.3 or 30 percent then 8 divided by 20 divided by 20 is 0.4 or 40 percent and then 2 divided by 20 is 10 percent okay so to make the pie chart our pie chart is just a circle right and it's going to be broken up into pieces of pie so i am going to make my best circle and uh, so that's my best freehand circle and then i am going to break this up into uh, four different pieces and they're going to be of different sizes now, I don't expect it to be perfect, like you don't have to get out a, pro a protractor and try to, you know, figure out where it's 20% of the circle, but, um, you know, start with something that's easy. So chocolate is 20%. Now I know that 25% would be a quarter of the circle, right? So 25% would be here. So it needs to be um, a little less than that. So I'm gonna draw a little less than 25% of the circle, and I'm guessing, you know, something like that. And I'm going to write the flavor name, use a different color, so this is chocolate. And to help the viewer, anyone viewing your pie chart, 
so that they don't have to guess, I would actually write on there 20%. Then, uh, how about, um, let's see, well, 20% plus 30% is 50%, so that means that if I draw the line here straight down, right, then the right-hand side is 50%, chocolate's 20%, so mint and chip would be the remaining 30. I write 30%. All right, cookies and cream is a 40%. That's not quite half, so maybe something like that. I'm guessing it might be a little, let's see. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, so, cookies and cream. And that's uh, 40%. And then lastly, the smallest piece, which is Rocky Road, is 10%, okay? And that's how we make a pie chart. So notice for the pie chart, we didn't really use the frequency. We only use the frequency to calculate the relative frequency because that's what we need to make the pie chart. We need the relative frequency or the percent. And there you go.